All right, uh, we are at section 14.5, spherical and plane waves. Uh, let's imagine a small spherical object oscillating so that its radius changes periodically with time. The result will be a spherical sound as shown, uh, the result will be a spherical sound wave as shown in the figure. The wave moves outward from the source at a constant speed. Because all points on the vibrating sphere behave in the same way, we can conclude that the energy in a spherical wave propagates equally in all directions. This means that no one direction is preferred over any other. If P sub AV is the average power emitted by the source, then at any distance R from the source, this power must be distributed over a spherical surface of area 4 pi R squared if we assume no absorption in the medium. This means the intensity of the sound at a distance r from the source is given by this equation, which shows that the intensity of a wave decreases with increasing distance from its source, as you might expect. The fact that i varies as 1 over r squared is a result of the assumption that the small point source, sometimes called, uh, a, sometimes called a point source, emits a spherical wave. Light waves also obey this 1 over r squared relationship. Because the average power is the same th through any spherical surface centered at the source, here are the equations for the intensities at distances R1 and R2 from the center of the source. We can calculate the ratio of the intensities at these two spherical distance surfaces. Um, We can represent spherical waves graphically with a series of circular arcs which correspond to, to lines of maximum intensity co concentric with the source as in the figure on the left here. These arcs are called wave fronts. The distance between adjacent wave fronts equals the wavelength. The radial points, the radial lines pointing outward from the source and perpendicular to the arcs are called rays. Let's take a look at a small portion of the wavefront that is at a distance much larger than lambda from the source, as in the middle figure. In this case, the rays are nearly parallel to each other and the wave fronts are very close to being planes. At distances from the source that are large relative to the wavelength, we can approximate the wave front with parallel planes called plane waves. We can consider any small portion of a spherical wave that is far from the source as a plane wave. The figure on the right illustrates a plane wave propagating along the x-axis. If the positive x-direction is taken to be the direction of the wave motion in this figure, then the wave fronts are parallel to the yz plane. And that's it for this, uh, this section. Next we're going to do uh, section 14.5, which is... Uh, the Doppler effect.